Let's talk about B12 deficiency symptoms that you never want to ignore. The interesting thing about B12 is that most people think about a vegan or a vegetarian being deficient in B12 because B12 normally comes from animal products, but there are so many other ways that you could become deficient that you need to be aware of. So if you're not able to make DNA correctly or repair DNA, number one, you're put at a higher risk for cancer and other problems. Number two, the red blood cell. If you can't make red blood cells, you cannot carry oxygen, you become anemic. So that's another big one. And number three, your nervous system and your brain. In order to make the myelin sheath, the stuff around the nerves, B12 is necessary. And without the B12, without the myelin, you get a short-circuiting neurological problems that don't just affect your hands and feet, but they affect your brain. But we're gonna get more into that when we talk into the severe long-term deficiency of B12. So when a person is first deficient in B12, they're usually gonna just feel a little tired. They're gonna feel a little bit weaker because the red blood cell is just not able to carry oxygen. They might look a little pale, and that's the anemia, because they don't have as many red blood cells. And they might even then noticing tingling in their fingertips or their feet, which is the start of nerve problems. But then as time progresses, other things can happen. Your tongue becomes very smooth, shiny, and red and swollen. You can develop mouth ulcers, which by the way, I had that when I was younger. You could become out of breath very easily. You get dizzy when you stand up too quickly. Those are severe anemia symptoms. Then you start having cognitive problems. Then also your mood starts going down. You start getting anxiety. Other symptoms include circadian rhythm issues. So your sleep cycles are off. So you just don't sleep that good anymore. And then also because B12 is involved with the nervous system, the person starts developing kind of a deficiency of neurotransmitters that show up as depression. I mean, how many people that are depressed end up going on medication when they really just have a B12 deficiency? That would be terrible because that would camouflage the symptom and they would never get better. Also, if you're deficient in B12, you can have problems with something called vitiligo where the actually normal pigment on the skin is not there anymore. So you get these white specks throughout the body. So there'll be a problem with pigmentation to the body and sometimes even the cracks in the corner of your mouth right here. And I had that as well growing up. Now, when things get really severe, you start having all sorts of problems with walking, severe muscle weakness, a lot more psychiatric problems that go beyond just depression like hallucinations, paranoia, okay, paranoia. Now, even if you have a subclinical B12 deficiency, you may feel like doom and gloom for no reason. I know some people have that at night, they have like night terrors. And the worst problem about a B12 deficiency chronically or long-term is permanent irreversible nerve damage. This is where you have all sorts of pain syndromes that are next, next to impossible to reverse. Now, the unique thing about getting B12 from the diet is that if you're not consuming animal products, you're not gonna probably get it. So vegans or vegetarians need to take B12. Now, before I get into the very strange and unique ways that you could become deficient, let's just talk about the foods that are the absolute highest for B12. At the very top of the list, this food has the most B12, the clams. Okay, clams, who would think? And then we get into liver, then we get sardines, then we get red meat. Now, if you do a search on what foods are high in B12, you're not gonna find red meat. Why? Because these search engines are programmed to filter out, because they're very biased sometimes, anything related to red meat. And then if you ask like ChatGPT, uh, why didn't you include that? They're gonna say because red meat is gonna put you at risk for cancer and cardiovascular problems. And, and then you can go back and forth with ChatGPT and argue with it till eventually you'll say, well, wait a second. Now, isn't there a difference between grass-fed uh, red meat and processed meat? And then ChatGPT will apologize and say, you're right. And there is no research on grass-fed meat. And so you really got to be careful about the search engines because red meat is one of the best sources of B12. Then we get to the tuna and the salmon and then grass-fed dairy, and eggs. So those are the foods that have a lot of B12, and our body cells don't make B12. However, in our large intestine, we do make some B12, okay? But the problem is we can't absorb it in that large intestine. So you never see that B12. It's probably used by your microbes, okay? But the way B12 works is that B12 has a, a trace mineral in it called cobalt, okay? And so here you have this cobalt uh, vitamin B12, you consume it, 
that goes down to the stomach. Now, because this B12 has a protein molecule connected with it, it can be destroyed by the stomach acid. So it quickly attaches to another compound to protect it, okay? And then when it goes into the small intestine, it gets absorbed. Here's the problem, okay? If you have low stomach acid, you're not gonna be able to absorb B12, okay? It's not gonna work. How many people have low stomach acid? Huge amounts, especially as you get older. After the age of 70, the pH, the acid in your stomach is down by 80%. The term is called chlorhydria, okay? Low stomach acid. And I used to test this in my office all the time and I would find people, a lot of people had low stomach acid, especially if they had heartburn, acid reflux, GERD, always low stomach acid. So they were very deficient in B12. If you have a genetic problem, which is more common than you might think, the term for that is called polymorphism, not that you needed to know that, but if you get a genetic test, a DNA test, you may find you have a problem absorbing B12. So this is why I take B12 on a regular basis. Now, if you ever, ever take B12 supplements, make sure that you always take the natural form called methylcobalamine. But realize taking B12 is only the tip of the iceberg. You have to have a, a healthy liver. You have to have an acidic stomach. You have to have a healthy small intestine. A lot of things have to be right for you to absorb B12. Now, since we're on the topic of B12, there's a little bit more you should know about that in this video right here. Check it out.